Hi, welcome to special edition of Ask a Gardener. My name is Diana Reina, and I am a former city council member and former Brooklyn deputy borough president of this wonderful borough of Brooklyn. We are standing live at what would be the front of the trench of the BQE. This is where I grew up. I'm a native New Yorker. And this is Los Sures Williamsburg, where I grew up. It is wonderful to be back home. I don't live too far away from here, but this is where it all started for me. As a former council member representing this district, there was a love of parks. There still is. But you wonder what happens to communities in impoverished communities like this, where you have monstrous highways like the BQE. You may have traveled the BQE, but did you know that this was a project, a passion project of Robert Moses, who directed what would be miles and miles of highways to get us from point A to point B. Now you're talking about a community that has access to Manhattan just less than 10 minutes away. Highways have become more important than human beings. Our streets are crowded. We don't have the great public safety. If you notice, we have the BQE above us. We have what would be the exit of the Williamsburg Bridge that connects you to the BQE or to land across the community. This intersection has become one of the most dangerous intersections in spite of all its paint crossings in recent years. Instead of it becoming more safe, what we've noticed is more tragedy, more speeding. We've noticed that we have to continue to address these issues for people to enjoy open space. 15 years ago, as the New York City Council member, I commissioned a study to address the lack of open space in my district. And this idea from a public conversation with neighbors came about. What if we were to take this highway and place a platform that would cover this trench? We have beautiful access to parks that align the highway, but they're not your most ideal. They have what would be greenery, but that's just to reduce the air, the air pollution and the air quality is compromised. Because no matter what you do, all these vehicles, trucks, cars, will continue to have to access the trench. We don't want to stand in the way of our infrastructure. It's all necessary. But we also want access to fair, equitable, open space. The ju environmental justice issue here is real. And you're going to help us address it. You're going to help us understand how one community can empower itself. The design 15 years ago of this feasibility study called for what is decking of the BQE. And you may wonder what that all means. Well, let me just take you back for a second. If you notice, these parks are definitely accessible. They are used. Our tot lots are active. Our basketball courts have tournaments. But what if we can expand all those programs and have one continuous park? You're standing at the corner of Borinquen Place and South Third. Rodney is the intersection of this amazing two-way, almost boulevard. What you see here is an example of a school that under today's federal guidelines would be illegal to build next to a highway. But this predates those rules, those laws. This is the Brooklyn Arbor School. Roberto Clemente School used to be PS19. 
It was the premier school with over a thousand kids enrolled in this one school building. All of our families depend on this particular institution. They depend on the schoolyard that was more of a concrete top. And in order to have accessible open space, we were able to redesign the park and work with a foundation and work with partners, with a public-private partnership to be able to build out what would be a better park away from what would be the need to come to a park next to the highway. Years later, the PTA that has been very active at the Brooklyn Arbor School decided to address what was some of the air quality issues we have here by redesigning a section for the younger kids, creating green walls. Simple things like this can make the difference in the lives of so many. Ask yourself, how do you impact as a gardener? Ask yourself, what would you do if you had the opportunity to redesign open space? Ask yourself, what park do you use? And is it providing you with what you're looking for? If you notice, we're walking down Rodney Street towards South Third Street. And this particular corner is what would be the passive area of our Rodney Park. Rodney Park is a series of parks from Borinquen Place all the way down to South Fifth Street. And this gives the opportunity for a senior or someone who wants to play some chess or have some lunch, enjoy some quiet time. This is the area where most people come to. As we move, continue to move down, you'll notice that there's this beautiful park for children where you have sprinklers and uh, a jungle gym. And these are parks that are necessary for our youth. We used to have a serious gang violence issue in this neighborhood of the South Side. And when you look at crime in areas that are ridden with what would be youth on youth violence. And you take a look at what is the open space per capita, there's a correlation. We need to begin to address those issues, those inequities, because that is where we see the need to be able to provide our youth real opportunities to deal with what are opportunities for them to engage in positive activity. This right here is one of our favorite spaces for our toddlers. This is where our local daycare center, Nuestros Niños, comes to enjoy with their teachers and have community tours and learn about their community. What is a bodega? What's the closest cleaners? What is a restaurant? Just engaging with important individuals in our community, learning to map their community, learning where they live. Open space is just as important. Learning to go to their closest park. And this is less than 10 minutes away. What we see here is the opportunity to be able to have a functioning comfort house. Our comfort house is where you go for a facility. And parks like these in New York City had not been touched to be renovated, to have functioning fountains, water fountains, functioning facilities to go to the bathroom since the 70s. Everything you see here took 40, 50 years to renovate. That is what we're addressing. Improving open space is all of our responsibility. Here in this special edition of Ask a Gardener, I want to engage you. I want to give you this bridge crossing opportunity to take matters into your own hands. Reach out to the Parks Department. Reach out to your local friends group. You have here what is the Friends of the BQ Green Project. And if you want to learn more about Friends of the BQE, just go to friendsofbqgreen.org. We are here 
because we support what is the North Brooklyn Co Parks Coalition Alliance. And the North Brooklyn Parks Alliance is an organization that takes care of all of our community board parks. Dozens and dozens of parks need attention in just one community board. And this community board has great need. Now everybody considers Williamsburg to be this posh neighborhood, but people have forgotten. Williamsburg was not always what you see today. Williamsburg was one of the highest crime-ridden communities, one of the communities that had the greatest youth-on-youth -youth violence, one of the communities that had dilapidated blocks and housing, substandard housing conditions. And one block at a time, we were able to renovate and be able to invest and organize around community to be able to address the needs of this community. So that took years, decades. And just as important as housing is, we also have to address the need for open space because going to a park less than 10 minutes away is a privilege in this community. Right here behind me, you're looking at the trench. Now, if you can imagine what is South Third Street, which is a street bridge responsible for pedestrians to cross over. Back in the 30s, this was one land where you didn't have to worry about crossing over. Our community is divided into two, east and west. Even though it's one Los Sures, we, we are forced to have to access the other side of the neighborhood through these bridge crossings. And each section has a bridge crossing that if we were to redesign with the support of New York State Transportation Department and New York City Transportation Department, we could actually engage in connecting these bridges. So take, for instance, two Legos, and you just take them and add more Legos in between. Now you're talking about one connected platform. Imagine a stage just growing bigger and bigger and bigger. That stage now becomes a park. The platform that's necessary for us to see the connection and be able to provide a multi-turf synthetic field for more activities, more open space, more barbecuing, more sitting around, more reading, more chess playing, more baseball playing. This particular community has wonderful little leagues, whether that's soccer, baseball, us, you name it, it is everywhere, volleyball. And it's not just little leagues, our adults. Who doesn't love a good volleyball game? Well, we can have all of that on this platform. We just need the support of our government, a government that responds to the needs of the people. At Ask the Gardener, I know you're ready to advocate for BQ Green. BQ Green is your park. Don't wait for an invitation to come and provide what is the necessary voice. You are that amplifying opportunity to be able to call upon what is our elected officials to support what is this magnificent idea. Out of the thin air, a park can come about. If you don't believe me, visit our website at www.friendsofbqgreen.org. You will see the imagery of what it is, people coming together, enjoying a park, being able to see green flourish, and being able to enjoy time together. When a community can come together at a park, that community is stronger than ever. I want to just show you what is currently here today on the other side of the South Side. This is Marcy Avenue. And if you look around, 
This is where the benches, believe it or not, date back to the 1970s. The, con the concrete where those slats of wood sit on is your key indicator. That's how you know the design of that particular era. One might call it vintage, and we don't mind vintage, but we certainly do mind that we have a lack of open space. It is time that we address this. This particular park is known for the homeless coming for refuge, to sleep, to encamp. This particular side of the park is where people don't feel safe to walk by. This particular side of the park is where you see uh, the lack of humanity or respect for pedestrian crossing or strollers or wheelchair accessibility. Vehicles just take over our sidewalks. This is where you see the illegal dumping. What are we going to do about it? I ask you, my fellow gardener, take a moment, just look around, take inventory, make a list and start communicating that to your elected official. And if you don't know who your elected official is, go to New York City Council website. Make sure that you don't stop there. Go and address the Parks Department. Go and address, in our case, the Department of City Transportation, the Department of State Transportation, the Governor's Office, the Mayor's Office. We need to get everyone involved. Believe it or not, 15 years ago, when this particular park was an idea just flourishing with a beautiful document that was published, we knew that there was only one project and that was in Dallas, Texas. Believe it or not, that particular project is now one of many that have started across the United States. Why can't we in New York City build a deck over a trench the way many other communities are doing so today? This is Diana Reina. I am so thrilled to be able to join you here today on this special edition of Ask a Gardener. Please support, whether that's fundraising, maintaining your park, participating in a friends group, or just advocating. You have the strength to make the difference. Make your voice count, make your vote count. In this upcoming election, we count on you to make parks your number one issue. Thank you for joining and thank you to North Brooklyn Parks Alliance.